Okay, hello everybody. So I just sat down at my computer after a day at work, the soul sucker job, and saw that GameStop has appointed a new CEO, guys named George Sherman. He has experience working at Best Buy. I understand he's been hot shots at these companies. Best Buy, Home Depot, Target, and Advanced Auto Parts. Now, I just want to point out real quick, those are all kind of different beasts than GameStop. I guess the closest um, in relation would be Best Buy. Um, everything else... Uh, I mean, I know Target sells clothes and food. I don't think those are going digital. Um, Home Depot, I don't think lumber is going to be digitized anytime soon or your nails. Um, same thing with your car parts. I don't think you're ever going to go in to buy spark plugs and you're going to have someone say to you, sorry, Elon Musk invented an a, all digital discless car or spark plugless car, we'll say. <laughs> um, you know, and it's just not something that ceases to exist. So I, I, I know just saying, oh, he's got experience with these successful retailers. It's like, but I don't think this is this is the same. Anyways, um, but they're expecting to make big changes to the brand to stay afloat. And you know what? I got to be honest. I've hated on GameStop a lot over the years for my own reasons, Um, but I wish them the best. And I just want to say that I hope that they can win me back as a customer. And like, let's talk about that for a second. So I rarely go to GameStop. It's maybe once or twice a year. Um... I never pre-order from them anymore um, unless there's an exclusive of sorts. Like I pre-ordered Xenoblade Chronicles for the Wii because I believe that was a GameStop exclusive um, and Secret of Mana because I wanted the physical copy for PS4. And when I otherwise spend money, it's barely any at all. Like I was just there within the last week. I got Rare Replay. I suddenly realized that was, a, I remembered rather, that that was a game. And I was like, oh, there's like 30 games on there. I'll go get that. Because I saw on their website it was $10. Before that, I bought some Vita games. Um, if you haven't seen my video on my, you know, my purchasing of Vita, uh, please go watch that. Uh, but anyways, I wanted some games for it. So I noticed there was a GameStop near me that actually had some of the games I was looking for. So I just kind of went on a gaming hunt. But other than that, I really don't shop at GameStop. Now... I've been gaming for probably more than like 27, 28 years. It's hard to put a number on it because, I mean, when I was like four or five, I didn't write down when I started playing games. Places like GameStop were a dream come true when they first started popping up. Before then, it was pretty much just like mom and pop places for me, pawn shops, um, if Blockbuster had some used games for sale. I can remember more or less a road trip that a friend and I made to go to this huge mall. I think it was in Manchester, uh, New Hampshire, um, just to go to an EB Games or a Funko Land. It wasn't a GameStop. It was one of those two. And because our little podunk town, you didn't have anything in this town. It was pretty much just Walmart and Kmart. You didn't have anything that specialized in video games. Certainly nothing back then that you could trade things in. So we both brought a ton of stuff and we drove to this huge mall and we got a lot of money for the things that we traded in. And I'm going to touch on that stuff later. Um, and before I knew it, it was like GameStop seemed to be all that there was, but things didn't get bad right away. I went to GameStop for a number of years. It would take time for things to get bad. Now, over the years where GameStop lost me, it has nothing to do with digital trends. I know people say, Oh, everything's going digital. Places like brick and mortar, GameStops are on their way out. But in fact, I'm kind of on the outside of that group looking in. Um, I've passed on many games simply because they're not available physically. And some of these games have critical acclaim. There's Hellblade. I believe it's pronounced Senua's Sacrifice. I do not own it. I have not played it because it is not a physical game that I can buy. And I probably never will, unless it gets very, very ridiculously cheap. There's Cuphead, another game that everybody went nuts over. I can't buy a physical copy, so I still have not played Cuphead, and I probably never will. I did not purchase Sonic Mania. I was excited about it, and then I was like, eh, never mind. Until it came out on Xbox One, PS4, I think Switch got it too. But until there was that physical copy, I'm as stubborn as a mule. I grew up with physical games, so it's what I like. It is physical media in general. It's what I have to have. Otherwise, no thank you. No, instead GameStop lost me with its aggressive um, pushing of pre-orders, membership subscriptions, every single time I went into the store. Now, I am not afraid to say no to people, no matter what it is. 
but you know it's bad when it becomes so integral to the experience that you think to yourself, oh man, I should go to GameStop. And then you think, oh wait, they're going to ask me if I want to pre-order stuff. And some of these guys just would not take no for an answer. They'll ask you three, maybe even four times. I remember when I was picking up Secret of Mana, I believe it was. This is no lie. And the guy goes, oh, is there anything, you know, coming out that you're looking forward to? And I was like, nah, I'm, nah, I'm pr pretty good. And I always try to joke about it. Like, oh, I'm behind, you know, I just got like the Mass Effect trilogy on PS3. Um, I'm only getting this because it's an exclusive here. And, but the guy was like, oh, so this is like the last game you're going to play. You're never going to play another game after this. And I was like, dude, don't be a smart ass with me. Like, I know it's your job, but like, you're not going to make any pre-orders that way. So it got to the point where I was just like, nah, I don't feel like dealing with that. You know, and they also lost me with their poor trade-ins. Like, I used to trade in things to GameStop. And now either my memory's playing tricks on me, or GameStop actually used to give you decent amounts of money for the things that you traded in. You know, but I felt like once they started to do this, like, oh, here's a $1.75 in store credit, and then they'd put the game on a shelf for 30 bucks. That was when I stopped bothering. And they and even when I was getting rare pre replay, they're like, oh, just so you know, we got some trade-in information we're going to put in the in the bag with your game. And I'm just like, I don't care. Like, oh, you can bring in your tablets. What are you going to give me? Like $40 for a tablet I paid like 400 bucks for? I don't even own a tablet. Wait, that's not true. I have a Kindle. And then another thing that always bothered me was the lousy $5 discount they gave you on newly released games that were pre-owned. I mean, when I was there to get Rare Replay, no joke, I saw Kingdom Hearts 3 in the PS4 section, the pre-owned, and I was like, you know what, I bet you it's $55. And sure enough, I took it out, $54.99, uh, and I was like, they have learned nothing. I mean, and I remember when you used to go to the counter, they haven't done this to me in a long time, but they'll be like, oh, just so you know, you can save a whole five dollars what is that like a big mac at mcdonald's like you can save a whole five dollars by buying a friggin' copy that someone took out of the case and like put it through a belt sander or whatever and and then like oh yeah five five dollars you know i be i felt like they just became too obsessed with their profit margins like i always thought to myself look why not pay like $30, I don't know what a good value is, $30, $35 for that copy of Kingdom Hearts 3. Okay, so you're giving them a lot of money. But then put it on the shelf and sell it for like, I don't know, some crazy number like $45 used, $50 used. You're still making money. And I feel like GameStop could have tried more, but they were essentially letting, you were letting them rip you off, you know, if you made trades. And I mean, I can't be the only one that stopped going as a result of that. Now, when you pay $60 for a game, I understand its value drops very quickly because a lot of other people are out there playing that game. Gaming's big now. It's not like it was when I was a kid. But you, you could at least try to give me a little bit less than what you think it will sell for. You know what would have happened? I feel like you'd have more people making trades and more people buying stuff if you were just keeping that amount of money right beneath what you thought people were going to pay for it. They could have at least tried it. In fact, that's probably what they were doing in the beginning, and then they stopped. And another thorn in my side with GameStop is I worked for them. It was very briefly. It was the end of 2006 into 2007. I remember my store manager was never a problem. He was, he was always nice. Um, but the district and regional managers that would visit, whew, they did not give two hot burps about you. Um, they would sooner tell you you couldn't wear sneakers to work than ask you what your name was. I remember right before I quit, they were pulling certain employee privileges, like the ability to check out used games. I didn't know that was a thing till I worked there. You could actually check out a used game, take it home for like two or three days and play it, and then you had to bring it back. And I'm like, there was n that was like the only incentive. And they were pulling them because your pre-order numbers like weren't up there, you know? And the pre-order things... Oh my God. I remember how asinine this was. So I remember one day, I think it was when one of the God of War games was coming out and I got really lucky. I happened to be at the counter and this guy came in and he told me right off the bat, he wanted to pre-order like the guide, the game. Um, so I got like two or three pre-orders just like that. Now for context, 
I never worked more than like five or six hours. I don't think they ever gave me an eight hour day, but they still expected me to work like five or six days a week for like 28 hours total. And remember, this is when GameStop was raking in money. So they could have afforded to pay me like $15 an hour. Anyways, in a five or six hour window, three pre-orders was actually good. It was actually a good thing. But instead of management being happy, they'd go, all right, next day, you got to get free four pre-orders. And if it was a slow day, or you were a game advisor working the floor and not the counter, you're not going to hit those numbers. And I believe somebody, if anybody worked at GameStop, could let me know. I think if someone came in and canceled a pre-order, I think that counted against you. But anyways, if you didn't hit your number, because it was always just higher the next day, as though it was that simple. If people don't want to pre-order stuff, it's not going to go up. Then you'd get reprimanded. Oh, you didn't hit your number today. And I'm like, uh, I got lucky the day before. Oh, and um, this time, getting paid about seven cents more than minimum wage. It's like seven dollars and some. Whoopee. Now, more context. <laughs> My next job, because I quit, was cleaning toilets. There was more money in cleaning toilets. So now I just want to talk about something else that's kind of important to me really quick. I know people think that physical games are on their way out and we're going to have this 100% digital future. Places like GameStop can't exist. And I want those people to be wrong. Here's why. When a completely digital... Because I'm from the completely physical age. A lot of us are. When a completely digital game, um, age of gaming arrives, I'll be happy to just hop off the bus because by the time that happens, I'm going to be like in my 40s or 50s, maybe even older. I'll be happy to hop off the bus and be like, you know what, I'm just going to play the stuff that I have. Or better yet, buy some physical things that I missed out on and play those. I'm not trying to say that I own zero digital games, but I own very few. In fact, my Steam library is probably about like 20 games. And a bunch of those are the Half-Lifes. Half-Life 2, Deathmatch, uh, Blue Shift, Opposing Force. I only buy digital when the sale is so ridiculous that I can't say no. Like when Sony has PlayStation Classics for like 99 cents. I'm like, Dino Crisis? I ain't even going to play that, but I'm going to buy it because it's cheap. And that's because digital games have no value to me. I can't hold them. They're not tangible. I am from an age where, like, that's ingrained who I am. I need tangible things. I still buy CDs. Sure, a lot of CDs you buy on Amazon will come with the MP3s, but I still buy CDs. I only buy physical books I do not buy any ebooks I watch Netflix sure but I don't buy TV shows or movies that I cannot hold in my hand I mention all this because I can't be the only one there's got to be other people like me I believe that even if GameStop ceased to exist somebody will pick up the mantle is that the right word in some form or another I mean, look at companies like Retro USB and, and Analog. Now, speaking of Retro USB, I spent $180, I think it was, on this, the AVS. And I was very happy to do so. It is an insane quality product. And it's preferable to someone like me over the NES only because I'd have to spend a lot of money to get a decent one. And it's, it's always going to be used. This sucker was brand new. And I have plans to buy the uh, Super NT from Analog in the not-too-distant future when I have some money. We might very well see something like that one day with the PlayStation 2, the PlayStation 3. People might be bringing back these old consoles that, I mean, let's face it, Nintendo didn't make that. My point is that these companies, analog, retro USB, they make quality products for a customer base that if it didn't exist, neither would these companies. I think that that will continue to be true in, the, in some form or another. It might not be GameStop, but it might be. I hope that they can salvage what's left of GameStop. I would honestly be very happy to like be excited about going there to shop again. I've heard that this cultural shift that they're going to try at GameStop is something that malls are trying, because especially in my area, malls are something that are like struggling. It could pay off. GameStop also has to fix its trade-ins, and it has to fix those like bad sale things where you're like, I don't want to go there because the clerk's going to yell at me if I tell him no. Now, I doubt George Sherman will ever see this video, but I wish him luck. And I honestly hope it's not the end for GameStop. I would hate to see 
GameStop closed. They're not the same thing as Blockbuster, but I was sad to see Blockbuster go too. Okay, so leave a comment letting me know what you think. Um, as always, thanks for taking the time to watch. It's pointless to make these videos if you, the viewer, do not take the time to watch them. So thank you. And uh, I have nothing more to add, so I'll see you next time.